Hey everyone, it is Prakash, one of the co-founders and the co-CEO of Xano. We got a question the other day asking that if there were a list, like a text list of uh, comma-separated image URLs, could we take each one of those images and save them as a binary into Xano, like actual files? So what that means is in my clipboard, I have a list of uh, Shopify URLs and um, you can see that it's separated by a comma over here. If I just took uh, one of these individually, could we save each one of these images into Xano? So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Um, and for those of you, you that don't know, you usually get a comma separated list like that when you're using a scraper. They don't necessarily send you the actual raw binaries, they just send you links to them and then you can do with them, with them whatever you want. So in this case, we're gonna save them into the Xano database. So I created in my demo workspace a products table. I'm gonna go into that table and I'm gonna add two fields. The first I'm gonna add is just uh, a text field called uh, images, right? And that's gonna have that list of images that I just uh, pasted in the browser. So again, if I look at it, you can see that each one of the URLs are there and then it's comma separated over here. So there's like four or five images. So I wanna store each one of these into my, my Xano database. Now I could do this in another Xano base a Xano database table, but for right now, just to make my life easy, I'm just gonna store it in the same database table. I'm gonna hit this plus button over here. I'm going to go to storage because it's an actual file that I'm storing, image metadata, and I'm gonna call this image array. And an array is a list of objects over here. So I'm gonna click save. And so uh, normally what I would do is I'd go into this array and I would you know, individually upload each image, but we're gonna actually write an API endpoint to parse through all of these and save them into this array. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go to my API now, and I'm gonna go into my default API group, and I'm gonna click add API endpoint over here, okay? So I'm going to start from scratch, and I can call this anything that I want. I'm gonna say image convert, and I'll go ahead and click save. All right, so here in the function stack, the very first function that we wanna execute is getting all the records from that products table. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit plus on the function stack, database requests, query all records, products. And I'll hit save. So immediately I get all records from the uh, products table, returning it as a products one variable. Uh, I see that that's what's being returned to my response. So if I run it over here, I'm getting this payload including the images comma separated. So one of the first operations that I wanna do is I wanna go through each one of these uh, rows of products, and then I wanna separate just the images, the comma separated list of image URLs. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna do data manipulation, I'm gonna do a loop, and I'm gonna do a for each loop. So for every single one of the products, I wanna take each individual product and do something with it. So I'm gonna take this first list as products one, uh, as item, which is totally fine. And the first thing that I wanna do is actually create a variable that just captures those images. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and uh, hit that plus button over there. And remember, I wanna go to data manipulation and I'm gonna go to create variable, okay? So in this for loop, I'm creating a variable called images because I just want those images extracted out. And the value that I'm gonna actually use is item. So that's an individual item coming from this query all records dot images. So just to explain what that is, remember each one of, I'm looping through each one of these products as individually item. And then if I look at the database table, there's a field called images, right? So I'm using dot notation to go into that images uh, block over there. And then there's this cool function called split that allows me to create an array of objects of just the item separated by whatever I tell it to. So I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna use the split filter. This is in our documentation and I'm gonna use the separator of a comma, okay? So now when I update this and save it, I'll just show you what I did. Instead of returning products one, I'm gonna return what this image is. is. Let me go ahead and do that. So when I return this, I hit run and debug, and I'm seeing now that there is uh, an 
array of just the images, which is exactly what I want, all right? So let's take this a little bit further. Now we want to go through each one of these images and we want to do something with it. So here um, I want to add actually another function and I'm going to do data manipulation and I'm going to do another loop. And we're going to loop through each one of these images. So the list this time is the images list. So I'm going to go ahead and select images. And each individual image, I'm just going to call that image, okay? So for each image, what I uh, want to do is go into the function stack. And I could either add that here or over here. And then the first thing that I want to do is create a file resource. So for each one of the images, I want to basically take that URL and capture the file resource outside of it. So I'm going to go to content upload, and I'm going to say create file resource. So it asks for three things. The first is, what do you want to call each file resource? What is the name? Now, I could just hard code that as image, but I actually, you know, if I look at that, um, if I look at uh, this Shopify list over here, we have actually image titles, pr3.jpg, for example. So what I would want to do is just ideally use the URLs or the image URL uh, file names that are coming through here. So we're going to do a little fanciness with the filters to just get that file name. So the first thing that we want to do is get that individual image, right? Oh, and I called it Im imag, so image. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so for image, now what I want to do is I want to actually add a filter. And this filter is called URL parse, right? And this is in our documentation as well. But what it does is it takes all of the components of a URL and it breaks it out into its unique parts. And one of those parts is called the path, right? The path that goes to that image URL. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're, we're going to do a URL parse. And then from that, um, I want to do a get right, that gets a specified uh, field and an object, and I'm gonna get that path. And I'm gonna say check, and again, this, this filters in our documentation. So now that I'm getting the path, I wanna actually uh, split each one of the uh, elements by a forward slash, because remember, if I look at this, um, let me actually just take an individual one, if I look at each one of these, there's all these forward slashes. I want to split each one of these by the forward slash. So I went ahead and, or what I'll do, go ahead and do is do the split filter. And then that split filter, I'm going to do the forward slash. And that should uh, give me uh, just that information. And then because I have now an array of the different objects, I just want that last piece. And that what is that last piece? the URL, right? So that's what we want to grab. So I'm going to add one more filter, and this is just called the last piece of that array. All right. So all of this was to basically make the file name use the existing file name structure. Again, if you don't care about the file name, you could have just typed in image, but I thought that this was interesting to cover. All right. So for the data itself, I'm actually just going to use the image itself, right? Again, the image is going through the loop of that list of images. Each one is called image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter <clears throat> called trim. Okay. Trim removes all of the white space or other characters from both sides of the results, right? So this makes sure to keep it as clean as possible. So make sure to put this here. And then in terms of what it's going to returning, uh, what it's going to return as, I'm just going to say file because it's going to be returning that raw file. Uh, and we're going to do something with that. So I went ahead and returned this as file. So the next thing we want to do is take that file resource and convert it into that image metadata, right? So that is that way Xano can review it and look at it and store it as an image. So I'm going to click another add under this file resource. I'll uh, click content upload and I want to create image metadata. All right. So creating image metadata over here, I can actually just call it image metadata. And then for the value, I want to use that file that was just created right above it. All right. So now that I've created this file, the next thing that I actually want to do is create a conditional. So now that I have this uh, image metadata, I basically have, remember, um, let me go back to my database table. In products, I have an image array. And I always want to basically take each new image that I'm getting from that comma separated value and end it, or sorry, append it to the bottom of that array. So in this array, there's a list of images. Go ahead and add a new one every single time. That's what I'm basically saying. So I'm going to go back to my API endpoint by clicking related API endpoints, image convert. 
And um, I'm going to add a conditional first, data manipulation conditional. And I'm going to go ahead and say, as long as that image metadata uh, does not equal null, this basically means make sure that it exists, as long as it does exist, then uh, what I want you to do is add that image metadata to the bottom of that array pile. So that's data manipulation, arrays, add to the end of the array. Okay, so I'm going to take that uh, existing uh, variable. So I'm going to say uh, item, right? This item that's coming from up here, item dot, remember, image array. So I'm going through each one of these products as item using dot notation to access that image array, which we can see is over here in product image array. So image array, and then the value is actually going to be I'm going to store it as that image metadata that I've basically created over here. All right. So now that I have that array um, of images, the last thing that I want to do is write it to the Xano database. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to edit the record because remember that record already exists. I'm going to click this add button over here, database requests, and I'm going to go to edit record and I'm going to do products. Okay. It's going to ask me what the field name is. I'll sure I'll look it up by ID. And the field value, I'm just going to say item dot ID. Okay. So remember, I'm doing this first for loop. Every product that is coming through is an item. Each one of those items has an ID. That's what we're looking it up by. The only field that I want to do this array thing to is uh, the image array field. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say item again. Where's item? Item dot image array okay so if i've done this correctly um or actually let me just recap what what we've done we've gotten all records from the products table each product is an item we've created a variable of just the images of the uh in that item so item.images so we have that list of comma separated urls in file resource what we've done is for the file name we're basically taking just that last piece the uh what was it uh pr3.jpg that's what we're storing is the name of the file name. The data we're using as the raw, the individual image itself, that URL, we're trimming out any white space or any unnecessary characters, and we're returning it as a file. We're then taking that file and we are um, converting it or uh, using the function to create an image from that file resource. As long as there's an image there, then go ahead and add it to the end of that image array and then store it back into that record, right? Like that um, image, uh, what was it over here? This image array uh, array, okay? So now that we've done all that, I'm gonna hit save. And then if I, uh, I'm gonna return, instead of returning images, I'm gonna return products to. And if I've done this correctly, it should all just work. So let's go to the database table and let's look at products. There's nothing in the images uh, image array right now, right? So let's go back to that API endpoint. Let's run it. So if I run it, it should process through and it looks like it created all the image metadata and we should now, when we go back to Xano, see that image array of all the individual images, right? So now it's working, right? So um, it's pretty awesome. Like it, from this comma separated list, we were able to look and load all of these individual, or sorry, store all of these individual images here within Xano. So if you have any other questions, please go ahead and put them in the comments. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.